Hey everybody, um, so this is a thumbnail study or thumbnail practice that you could implement to figure out compositions for a large painting, okay? Um, since this is a fundamental foundational video, I'm going to say that this is best for, let's say, entry point for like acrylic painting or watercolor painting. Um, so I'm actually not going to be using any paints for this sketch. Uh, you could certainly do that. I've done that in the past. I'm using markers. Um, I think markers are directly translatable to the way one uses, uh, particularly acrylic paint or oil paint, because painting is done in, in layers. So you stack colors on top of each other and use um, the nature of paint through the way light goes through paint and the way that paint mixes together, whether it's dry on dry and wet on dry. All terms that may, maybe don't make a lot of sense right now, but the way you use markers is directly translatable to the way one would use um, paint, okay, acrylic or oil paint. So I have a gray, okay, and I have my primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. And I have a white marker for highlights or tint. Um, so the reason why I have gray is that uh, I can establish a base coat on the page. And I, I really do use a very neutral gray. You can certainly use grays that are a little darker. But this is... Uh, This one's a little bit dry, but it'll it'll work for this. Um, painting on white is typically what a lot of people expect to do, and you certainly should in some cases. But um, from an oil painter I learned a few years ago, um, he said, if you coat your your canvas or your page with gray, the colors will look more pure. Uh, whatever those colors are that you are stacking on top. So gray is a really great foundational neutral tone. Okay, tone being, you know, shadows that are in the middle or um, a color that's in the middle. Okay, um, so there's my base coat. And I did a nice, a nice square, so it's a nice controlled area. Okay, I'm going to be drawing these pair of glasses, these blue light glasses, off to the side. Um, now... I am only using primary colors because I think it's best to have just three colors, the parent colors, uh, in order to figure out what color should serve what purpose when I'm looking at an object. So for instance, blue, I'm going to use for shades, shades being the darkest values or shadows because this is the darkest color of the three. This would be for tone. As I said before, stuff in the middle, okay? Um, those middle values, those middle shadows. And then yellow and white marker or the white of the page can be used for tint. Okay, maybe you've seen these things. Maybe you've heard of tint, shade, and tone like when you've adjusted a television. Um, so this is, these are, yellow will be my highlights, okay? Just using these three colors to render this, okay? Um, and it's a thumbnail, so I'm going to go fairly quick, okay? And I'm looking from above, which is also nice. It's creating a, an interesting angle. And additionally, it's nice to create a box um, and then to draw whatever it is you're drawing outside of that box. Uh, it creates like asymmetry, um, so you don't have something that is just like flat and stays within the confines of um, the box. I mean, you could certainly do that. Like if you had something on a table, for instance, like if you look at a painter named Wayne Tebow, the way he would do his studies, they're very controlled because uh, he played with symmetry a lot and he played with asymmetry, but a lot of his stuff is very ordered. But I'm going to uh, break through um, 
this box probably at some point to create that asymmetry. So I'm just looking at the darkest parts of the glasses right now. I'm not super concerned about the uh, proportions. Uh, you know, I did another video on that. I'm actually more concerned with light and contrast in this case. So this thumbnail, this quick study is more about the way light is behaving with my still life right now. And I apologize if my hand is blocking and there's some cast shadows. I'm going to fix up some lights in the future that'll um, make things a little more br brightly lit. And uh, I might get something larger like an iPad to, to film these. For now, I'm just doing it on my phone. And by the way, these markers have like a nice chisel tip to them. So as I'm making these straight lines there, they can be nice and flat and uniform. So if you can get a marker, typically markers have a, a chisel to them. And doing these little studies is actually just generally fun. Um, and there's not a, there's not a huge buy-in, okay? Because you know it's a, it's a thumbnail study. It's not supposed to be perfection. You're just figuring out light and colors. Um, and in painting, I think it's like best to like use... There's so much going on in painting at once that I think it's really important to... Uh, have a controlled environment as much as possible. Like don't use too many colors. L like limitations not only create um, a learning curve for beginners, but I think limitations also create um, a feeling where you're not gonna be too overwhelmed uh, or get anxious about um, figuring things out as you go. Because painting is, is a beast and color theory is, is a beast as well. So now I'm going in with the tone, the red, you know, all of those, uh, all those shadows that are in the middle. And I can even use some cross hatching technique like on these lenses to give the illusion of like that subtle violet that is appearing through because they're blue light uh, blue light lens or sorry blue lens um, glasses and then finally sorry I know this video is a little bit longer than I ex I wanted it to I want to kind of keep it to five or six but I'll try and keep it a little short I'm almost done um, and then there's the tint because the light is falling on the table a lot of this stuff is brightly lit and it's during the day right now so I also have natural light on my left okay um, one more thing, I'm actually, that gray is a little, uh, it's a little dried out, so it's not the, the purest form of that color, so I'm seeing if I've got a similar gray, just so I can punch up this contrast. Yeah, that's a little better. Okay, so that's that. Um, you know, if you do about like 10 of those for whatever subject matter you have, like you just reposition whatever it is you're drawing uh, from study to study and 
you know, give yourself a timer, um, less time to think and more time for instinct to take over. I'd say that's a really good practice. Um, yeah, you know, I'd say like do 10 of these um, for like two and a half, three minutes each. So it's about, you know, half an hour or less. And you'll start to get a really strong idea for composition, color theory, and value and contrast. All right, have fun. Good luck.